Hey everyone, so uh, this is going to be a quick video about my latest project. I am currently working on four or five projects, um, and they're huge and I can't talk about them uh, just yet. Um, this project I'm just going to tell a little bit. I can't tell the big aspects, but um, I'm going to tell you about a little unintended consequence of what happened. And it turned out pretty cool. We're testing it right now. And uh, it's, it's pretty promising so far. So um, I'm going to tell you about Project Fulonium. Uh, currently, uh, this is a new lubricant that I'm working on. It comes in two forms. Um, uh, this is uh, Fulonium Black, and this is Normal Fulonium. Um, and I'll tell you uh, all about both of them and the chemistry behind it. Um, it's actually more engineering than chemistry this time. Uh, but we'll see. So, uh, basically, uh, Project Fulonium is if we were to use engineering industry standard lubricants in Rubik's Cubes, what would happen? Uh, in engineering, you have certain industry standards for certain materials contacting each other. So, uh, metal on metal has a certain lubricant. Different metals, different hardness of metals, you use different lubricants. Um, and even for different applications with those same metals, you use different uh, lubricants. So uh, if you're doing uh, steel on steel, you would use a suspension so that in your cutting fluid is actually a suspension of suspensive liquids. Whereas if you were doing cogs that were also steel on steel, you might use a dry lubricant. Um, and I just thought of that like really quickly. I might be wrong, there might be superior wet lubricants out there, but, um, but basically uh, what I'm saying is uh, for each application there is a superior lubricant and for plastic on plastic there's a lot of documentation out there that a lot of people use Teflon based lubricants um, in conjunction with silicone oils. So I wanted to test all of these industry standard lubricants and see what happens. Um, so two things I tested are molybdenum disulfide and uh, Teflon, uh, PTFE. So I want to talk about PTFE first. Uh, PTFE stands for polytetrafluoroethylene. Uh, basically that means you have a big ethylene chain and to each unit of ethylene you have four tetrafluorine atoms and they're polymerized. So that's why you get the name poly, polymerized, tetrafluoro, for fluorines on ethylene, PTFE. Uh, trademark name is Teflon. Um, PTFE is interesting because um, here's something that's going to blow your mind. So whenever you touch things, you're never actually touching the atoms. Everything you touch, you're simply touching the electron fields. Everything you feel is just electrons. You never actually feel the actual objects. And to me, that just blew my mind when I first learned about that in high school. And that is the trick to uh, fluorine's ridiculous coefficient of friction. Because fluorine is so electronegative, its electron cloud is really repulsive. So when you get them to rub against each other, they're going to want to repel. And you get some really interesting properties that you can read online that I won't bore you with today because the only thing we're covering is the uh, lubricant aspect. So, if you were to test right now uh, dry Teflon powder or liquid Teflon spray, you'll figure out that it kind of sucks. It's not very good. Uh, the powder in particular, no matter how small you get it, um, one micron, two micron, it clumps together and it doesn't stick at all to the plastic. It forms these uh, clumps that just fall out. Uh, dry Teflon powder is a very bad lubricant. Um, however, if you take that Teflon and uh, you uh, form a colloid, a colloidal suspension, uh, I think you'll have to look that up, uh, but if you form a colloidal suspension in silicone oil, it actually turns out to be a surprising lubricant. So the lube we're using, we test, I tested different um, sizes of particles, um, anywhere from one, two, three, four, five. I tested a range, so 1 to 3 micron, 3 to 5 micron, uh, super micron, sub micron. And what I noticed is um, 
Well, I can't reveal that. There, there is an optimal range of particle size. So a micron is a thousandth of a millimeter, and there are a thousand millimeters in meters. So imagine one millionth of a meter is how big these particles are. Um, and I suspend a certain amount of that in a certain amount of set of strokes of silicone oil. I'm uh, sorry, I can't give out all the details, but um, I'm using lab grade uh, Teflon that's 99.99 uh, .99 pure. And it makes a really interesting lubricant that has high viscosity, but very low coefficient of friction. So imagine you have something that resists turning like weight three lubricant, but has the gliding speed of say weight one or cubicle speed, which is really, really, really interesting. And when you change the lube and change the concentrations up, if you really like gummy soft cubes, you can actually achieve that with very, very low amounts of lube. And it's a really weird mix of feelings. And back when I was making DNM, I didn't think I could improve upon the silicone lubes, but I think I did. And it's not conclusive, we're still testing it. Um, I think I might give out a few samples at Ledgewood, see what people say. Uh, Ledgewood is my next competition that's in 13 hours. Uh, it's pretty soon. Um, and we'll see what happens. Um, but so far, uh, it's going pretty well. Um, we've sent, uh, I've sent a few cubes out um, with this lube, and the reception's been pretty good. And um, that was the first one. The second one here, you'll notice it's this black lubricant. Uh, this is what's called molybdenum disulfide. Uh, this one's a little different. So uh, this is industry standard for metal on metal contact in engineering. Um, and it works because the molybdenum particles have a certain structure similar to graphite. They will slide and shear at each other. So the shearing lubrication of this is very, very high. So the coefficient of friction for a molybdenum disulfide is not as good, uh, quote unquote, as uh, Teflon. Teflon is very, very low, but um, it's very good for hard, hard uh, surfaces. So uh, one thing I forgot to cover is the hardnesses. The shore hardness for both of these materials is much lower than ABS. And that means when you have a softer material, the ABS grinding against each other um, these, these, it'll actually crush these particles and these particles won't scrape the surfaces. And when you get down to a certain micron width, these particles will fill in the gaps of the plastic. So when you get these friction grooves and you get these imperfections, these particles of Teflon or molybdenum will actually make their way into the gaps and fill them in. And when they fill them in, the resultant filled in gap actually has a much lower coefficient of friction than the ABS itself. And uh, I noticed that when I put it into this really old follow, and it was amazing because it breathed new life into this old cube. Because when you pass the point of broken in and you get into broken, like broken down, your worn out old cubes, uh, using these loops it will actually fill in those gaps and restore the old performance of these cubes. And that's really, really cool. Um, I don't see any other lubricant doing that. And uh, that's one application. Um, oh, but back to what I was saying about uh, this, what I like to call gluonium black. Um, it's very, very good for the hardware. It's a very marginal thing. And it has another application that I can't reveal quite yet. But for hardware and black cubes and some big cubes, uh, this stuff is pretty amazing. Oh, and old cubes. Um, the only downside is um, it tends to be really ugly. So if you use this on a white cube, you'll also notice there's like a gray coating on the cube, which comes off. It doesn't stain the cube, but it doesn't look aesthetic. And that's something that uh, will bother a lot of people who are neat freaks. Um, but I'm using this right now in uh, the Bouchuan, uh, Boutre, um, big cubes, this stuff's pretty nice. So um, this is similar 
to the other one, except that uh, the shore hardness is a little different, and I've noticed it filling in the gaps even better. And for puzzles with a lot of surface area, so 3x3s actually have very little surface area. Um, the recent ones have uh, the cutouts, the, um, the grooves and things. So for big cubes, I, I really like this move. And uh, I think I'll be sending more samples out to testers and see what they think. Um, so yep, uh, I think I'm really sleepy. I'm still on Asian time. I recently went on a two-week uh, vacation through Asia, and it was amazing. But uh, just in case I didn't already explain it, and if I did, I'll probably edit it out or something, or maybe I'll just leave it in. Uh, I wanted to explain the, uh, the origin of the name of this project. So this is project is called Project Fluonium. Uh, the root word is fluo, uh, Latin, which means flow. Um, and if you look at the molecular formula of Teflon, uh, Teflon, uh, PTFE, it's uh, mostly, most of the molecular weight comes from the fluorine. And fluorine has the same root word, fluo, for flow. So it only makes sense that we keep the root word and call this Project Fluonium, since it is a fluorine-based molecule, and that molecule is the basis of this lubricant. So you might as well keep the name. A uh, little chemistry humor. Um, so yeah, that should be it. I will be testing these. We'll see what's up, and hopefully have it out to the consumer. And if you're ever at a competition, uh, talk to me, and I'll I would love to give you a sample and get your opinion. So, thanks again for listening, as always.